Okay, good evening. We're going to go ahead and call our regular uh, city council meeting to order for Monday the 21st. May we have the roll call, please? Mayor Kusumoto? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Murphy? Here. Council Member Cherko? Here. Council Member Gross? Here. Council Member Hasselbring? Here. Okay, and before we do the pledge, um, I would like to introduce our staff. So we have the city clerk, Wendy Quintanar, who reports to us, city attorney, Michael Dowd, who reports to us, and uh, city interim city manager, uh, Les Johnson, who reports to us, and I'll ask him to introduce his staff that's here. Thank you, Mayor Council. We have a number of people here tonight. We have our police chief, Eric Nunez, our finance director, Eric Hendrickson. We have our recreation manager, Ron Noda, and recreation manager, Emlyn Noda. We also have our police captain, Chris Carr, uh, our fire chief, Ron Roberts. We've got our city engineer, David Hunt. Uh, his uh, project engineer, Chris Kelly. Uh, our building official, Mark Abbott. Building inspector, Alan Chambers. And associate planner, Tom Oliver. Great, thank you. Okay, next we'll have the pledge led by um, Councilmember Hasselbrink, and then if you would remain standing for the invocation by Councilmember Churko. Please join me as we pay honor to our flag and our country. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. We are gathered here today to make decisions for our community. May we use our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral as we consider all options, and may we act in the best interests of our community and our fellow citizens. We hope and pray for the continued safety of our community, our nation, our first responders, and our armed services. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. If I can ask the council to join me up front for, number five, for items 5A and 5B. Presentations. And uh, first up, we have um, a commendation or uh, cam commendation for Dr. Robert uh, Pugash, a urologist, local urologist. I'm going to turn it over to Councilmember Gross if you can introduce him. Thank you. Come on up. Dr. Pugash has been in business in Los Alamitos over in front of the medical center for well over 20 years. Uh, he was instrumental in developing a procedure that wasn't accepted in this country, wound up having to leave and go to foreign countries in order to perform the procedure. I'll let him tell you what it is. And uh, it's finally been approved here, so he's very eager to have the new hotel open so that he can get his patients to come in here and do the procedure locally. But we're happy to have you and, and appreciate you being in our community for as long as you have. Thanks for your kind words. So uh, in 1999, uh, the Japanese figured out a way to use a device called HIFU, High Intensity Focused Ultrasound, to eradicate prostate cancer without the typical side effects seen with surgery or the high recurrence rates we see with radiation. Uh, so for 12 years, every month I left the country, went going somewhere else, either to Europe or the Caribbean or Mexico or Canada to treat our patients. And finally, in 2015, we became the 46th country to approve the technology. Uh, we have it in Los Alamitos. We are the largest and busiest uh, center in the country right now. Uh, and our patients do come and stay in some local hotels, but the new place will be even better, which is great. Uh, and so we're able to treat patients with no incisions, no needles, just ultrasound energy. Uh, frankly, th uh, two years ago, I had prostate cancer. That's how I was treated. So it is a remarkable device, and Los Alamitos is squarely on the map with this because we are the busiest center in the country right now, and very possibly in the world. Uh, and as I'm thinking about it, I wonder if those numbers are true, too. So uh, it's great that we have such a fabulous community and a fabulous hospital to support us, and uh, it's an honor to work here. Thank you very much. And if you take a photo off. Okay, next up for 5B, we have um, presentation of the proclamation, <laughs> proclamation to Chief uh, Police Chief Eric Nunez in recognition of Red Ribbon Week. So, Chief, I'm going to let you talk about this one. Okay. So, Red Wib Ribbon Week. Well, Red, it's hard to believe that 34 years ago, 
um, Kiki Camarena was um, tortured and murdered. He was a DEA agent um, and working in Guadalajara, Mexico, and um, and and actually helped to uh, this um, um, investigation that he was doing it was an undercover investigation. He he wound up unmasking a, a just an enormous one of the biggest finds of dope and cash that they had at that time, and uh, I think it was in Chihuahua, Mexico, and so. Um, uh, since his death, they started trying to recognize uh, him and for his effort in in our uh, in the fight against drugs and what was called the war against drugs at that time. And um, and I believe it was like 1988 when they finally decided to call it Red Ribbon Week, which is the last is between the 21st and the 30th of this uh, of this month. And um, we do this in honor of him wearing the red ribbon and, uh, and asking the kids to remember about this. I know a lot of the kids here obviously never knew about Kiki Camarena, but should know that he dedicated his life and he was married, had children, and, uh, and everything to help the, uh, the ills that, and the deaths and all of the stuff that happens with drug trafficking, including human trafficking with drug trafficking, and, and he was working on all of that uh, for all of our sakes. So uh, with that, I'd just like to say thank you, Mayor. Council. Okay, next step, we'll have oral communications. Um, so it would be um, any individual in the audience may come forward to speak on any item within the <coughs> subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. Remarks are to be limited to not more than five minutes per speaker. I do have one blue card. Uh, certainly if you wanted to speak, don't let this uh, deter you from speaking, but the blue card is for, uh, is it Orlando? Gutierrez. Cortez? Gutierrez. Oh, Gutierrez, please come forward, sir. Good evening to uh, Honorable Council. My name is Orlando Gutierrez, and I'm here on behalf of Los Alamitos Racecourse. The reason that I'm here is just to invite the community, as well as our respected council, to a couple of community events that will be taking place at Los Alamitos Racecourse in the next few weeks. This Saturday, October 26th, from 6 to 9 p.m., Los Alamitos will host our annual Halloween Carnival. Uh, it's a great event for uh, the community. It will feature uh, pony rides, games, and a lot of fun. Uh, and it also benefits the Los Alamitos Youth Center. Uh, they're one of the beneficiaries of this year's uh, carnival. So we wanted to invite the community to join in, those, uh, in, the, in the fun and those festivities. On uh, Saturday, November 9th, uh, Los Alamitos will also host our first ever Honoring Our Veterans at the Night at the Races. Uh, it's gonna be a, a great event to honor our wonderful veterans. Uh, we will have uh, opening ceremonies, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, great activities uh, to honor our veterans. We're going to recognize community, uh, local community veterans in the winter circle. Uh, we are working with the, uh, the Joint Forces Training Base to have some displays of military vehicles and their support. Uh, also, the Orange County Veterans uh, Services Commission uh, is also uh, helping us put together a uh, service fair uh, to provide uh, those veterans uh, with, with a lot of uh, services that they might not be aware of. Uh, and also Santa, Santa Ana College will be there uh, providing information on how our veterans can um, take advantage of uh, educational services that the college might have. Uh, it's also, this is a free community event. It will take place from 5 to 9 p.m. Uh, we are very 
proud to be working with our community to put together this event, and we hope to make it a yearly, a yearly occurrence at the race course. Uh, and again, we uh, invite the council to, uh, to join us on uh, this uh, inaugural event at the race course. If you have any questions, I'd, I'd love to uh, answer them. If not, thank you so much for uh, having this opportunity. Thank you, oh. Mr. Gutierrez. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close uh, oral communications. And over here, uh, number seven would be council announcements. So is there anybody that wishes to go first on council announcements? Sure, I'll go. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, so this month we had, in the past month, we had four fiscal sustainability meetings. I was lucky enough to attend three of those. And I just want to uh, thank our city staff for putting on such wonderful presentations, uh, city manager, uh, and our fiscal sustainability manager, who's not here, David Kane, uh, did an excellent job. And we had uh, other folks pitching in. Captain Carr pitched in as well and, and helped uh, explain some of the issues that were uh, being addressed at the meeting. So I just wanted to say that uh, you all are doing a great job uh, answering tough questions out there. So thank you. There's one more meeting, I believe, on Thursday. Uh, this Thursday at 6 p.m., these meetings are meetings in which city staff explains the current fiscal <coughs> situation that the city is in, not unique to Los Alamitos. So many other cities are facing similar situations. Um, and the city staff uh, explains, uh, provides all the numbers, all the details, answers questions. It's really a great opportunity to uh, come out and see what's happening in the community and, and pitch in uh, any uh, ideas you've got and, and voice your opinion. So that'll be uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. at uh, St. Isidore Historical Plaza. Um, I also attended the uh, Autumn Fest at St. Hedwig this, uh, this past month, the Vector Control, Control District meeting, uh, Americana Awards Committee meeting, um, and uh, this past weekend I was uh, in Washington, D.C., not on city business, uh, but I stopped by our congressman's office, Alan Lowenthal, and said hello to him on, on behalf of the city of Los Alamitos. And I thought it was kind of neat. Two of the uh, young females that worked at his office uh, immediately identified themselves as Los Alamitos high school graduates. So that was, that was kind of neat. Uh, this Saturday, there's a prescription drug uh, take back event at McAuliffe, uh, sponsored by the district and by our own police department. So I just want to remind everybody about that. We also have our trunk or treat. Ron or Emmeline, maybe one of you want to uh, explain trunk or treat or tell us where it's at or anything like that? Sorry to put you on the spot. No problem. Uh, I just want to say good evening, Mayor, City Council. But our trunk or treat is this Saturday at Little Cottonwood Park. It is a free event, so we invite the community to come out. So we have uh, about 22 trunks that we, you could trick or treat from. We have 16 vendors, four food trucks. We have a spooky train ride. Uh, we have carnival games. And we have just a lot of fun activities, arts and crafts, selfie stations. So again, it's our annual trunk or treat, October 26th this Saturday at Little Cottonwood Park from 5 to 7.30. So again, we invite the community to come out, dress out in your Halloween costume and enter the popular costume contest. And I just want to remind people that if you do want to enter the costume contest, we start promptly at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, a couple weeks ago, and I talked about it at the last council meeting, we were having a press conference with Orange County Fire Authority and the JFTV. That happened, um, and we were able to unveil the Firus fixed wing intelligent plane. Um, what that does, it's going to serve all five counties in Southern California. It's a live intelligence plane, um, and Chief Roberts, if I'm butchering this, please help me. Um, it, it flies over, and it, it um, marks the parameter of the fire, so it also helps with evacuations and also... Um, where to put boots on the ground. Um, it's gonna be stationed at JFTB. That's why that was such a big deal that we're, we were able to combine the resources of the fire authority along with the training base and both were just stumbling over each other how excited they were to be able to work together. So it looks like it's the beginning of a very, very successful partnership and we get to benefit um, from that partnership. So that was uh, neat. There were lots of news uh, vans out there covering this. And uh, the week before, the plane had already been used two times in uh, firefighting. So it's a, it's a great thing to have. Um, I did a plan attend the uh, Placentia State of the City. Um, and then the following week, I did the League of California Cities Division meeting for Orange County Division. I was reelected for the Division Board of Directors, which I'm thrilled to serve on. Jean Hernandez from Yerba Belinda is our current or our new um, Orange County Division President. 
I attended the OCFA open house at our local fire station here. Um, that's always a great thing. The kids get to play on the trucks and talk to the firemen, and um, it's just always neat to see it in a, in a kid's eyes um, with the firemen. I uh, attended the fiscal sustainability meeting at Little Cottonwood Park. Staff did an amazing job at um, answering a lot of questions, some of them nice and some of them not so nice, and they were able to answer it in the best of their ability, and I thought it, the information that's getting out there is accurate and um, it's just it's it's a good thing to have as far as as we educate as we move forward attended the taste for la salle uh, another successful year this year they implemented a new online bidding so everybody did their bids not on the clipboards and scratching each other's names out but you actually did it on your smartphone and you were notified when you were out bid and um, it was it was a neat thing um, to be able to do and like councilman Churko said saturday is a busy day we've got the uh, drug take back in the morning we've got trunk or treat in the evening and for those adults if you're not trunk or treating or anything else we've got the casa youth shelter uh, gala over in um, huntington beach and that's a local organization that takes care of our at-risk youth and um, it's a great fundraiser as well but that's it thank you dean thank you um i attended the uh or i was invited by homeland security uh, earlier last month to go down and view the uh, progress on the uh, barrier wall and it was an extremely interesting and uh, good opportunity I went down with a group of uh, Orange County realtors and uh, it was very impressive the the new the new changes in comparison the old wall that was down there was uh, corrugated metal uh, runways from Vietnam with razor wire across the top. The new wall on the U.S. side is 30 feet tall, and it's made out of steel uh, four by fours uh, with uh, rebar in the middle of it, and then filled with <coughs> concrete. So it's going to be very difficult for for folks to get across or through on that particular wall. The one on the Mexico side is is 18 feet. A, a good opportunity. Um, I had the opportunity this uh, past week to uh, go to the American Legion Post 716. Uh, American Legion is celebrating 100 years of existence and they uh, placed a time capsule out front of uh, their facility. Um, I also had the opportunity to go to Joint Forces Training Base uh, to meet and, and meet and greet basically with the crews from the various uh, air squadrons that were in town for the Great American uh, Air Show that was held in Huntington Beach. And uh, that was very fascinating. For the council, uh, I was appointed as the voting delegate for the League of California Cities last week. In addition to being there Sunday for the voting, uh, I had an opportunity to attend a variety of seminars, good information on uh, changes that are coming to the city and all of the new laws that the state uh, has passed and the governor has signed. Um, for the council's information, there were two resolutions. I was instructed to vote yes on both of them. Uh, one of them got pulled and sent back to committee. The second one, which dealt with the environmental issues from uh, Mexico and sewage uh, spills that are coming across the border uh, was passed, so the league will be taking efforts on that. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to attend the change of command at the uh, Joint Forces Training Base for the first of the 140th Aviation Battalion uh, and gave certificates to both the incoming and outgoing uh, commanders for that unit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> As two of my colleagues have mentioned, we've had several financial presentations. I was able to make three of them. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, this is a really important time in the history of Los Alamitos. We're going to make some financial decisions in the next year and go out to the voters. Uh, we're going we're to make some big changes that will affect us for a long time. So if you haven't gotten involved yet, you still have one more meeting to, to come out, hear what we have to say, and ask any questions you have. I, I did notice that you, know, you wisely let the consultant take most of the heat at these at the parks, but um, also um, went to go, you know I was really honored this 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 month got to go to a new event called Heroes, 
And our hero was our captain, Captain Carr, who, after a very eloquent introduction, got a tremendous heartfelt standing ovation. He was the only one in the, in the group, of all the heroes, that got a standing ovation as the, as the um, community got a chance to say thank you for a life of public service. So congratulations on that. Uh, also, got to go to the uh, coffee with a cop. In the, you know, when the chief sticks his head out of the window instead of the normal barista, it's, it's shocking to a lot of people. They're not used to an armed guy delivering the coffee, so it was very interesting to see. Uh, also able to attend the State of Santa Ana and the Americana Awards Committee, where we get our new candidate for next year. Les, I'd like to request, uh, again, a discussion of, of penalties for people who start their construction sites too early and also a report that I could give out to my neighbors about the soil samples the soil remediation somebody so they can understand what's going on there they can see it's happening they just don't know what's happening thank you thank you Richard <clears throat> so um, I also attended the autumn fest over at St. Hedwig um, the uh, LoSal family dance uh, that was really a, quite the event it was uh, well well done thank you very much for putting that on and uh, one of the auctions I won was for the uh, escape room and we're trying to schedule that so that's gonna be really fun um, I attended one of the six or one of the five uh, sustainability meetings in my neighborhood and there were about uh, 35 of the neighbors that were there and I did take notes on those so it'll be um, real interesting to see <coughs> how that uh, feedback gets kind of incorporated into uh, some of the discussions and the decisions we might make so I want to thank my neighbors for uh, attending that <clears throat> I also got to attend uh, the Thunderbirds as they arrived here on Thursday before the Great Pacific uh, Air Show and um, Colonel Dusich had hosted the um, pilot autograph session and that was uh, tremendous in terms of I think there was over a thousand people that had showed up to get the autographs to meet the pilots so I think it's one of the things that um, what makes our country really great that uh, these are really the people's assets the pilots there are really servants of the people and they're there to um, hopefully um, ignite uh, the imagination of the people that are here you know the young people that are here um, there's more than just uh, what you might be uh, experiencing in your uh, life but uh, there's a the world of adventure of, of uh, technology of stem of service to the country and that's what the air show does for us. Uh, for us. And uh, I get to attend the uh, air show as well as the VIP reception afterwards. And uh, the pilots that are there with their families, I mean, they were so grateful that they were given the opportunity to show what they can do for this, uh, for this nation as well as for their respective nations, the, uh, the British uh, Red Arrows as well as the Canadian so Snowbirds. <coughs> so I think next year when this is put on again, um, Los Alamitos here, our little city, you know, plays a big role in that because um, the Joint Forces training base is the landing pad for that. And so you hear the noise of, uh, of the jets taking off um, while they're practicing as well as on the weekends. And, and just remember, that's just the sound of freedom. And uh, it, it's just great that we can do that. Um, I attended the Taste of Los Sal. Um, I also attended the League of Cities. And uh, the one part that I was able to attend one day was on the modern uh, policing. And uh, there are there some things out there from, uh, as, as Council Member Gross said, uh, bills that were signed into law and that really just, um, you know, clamps down on things that I think are perceived as abuses by the cities and by the law enforcement that are t totally not the case, but um, we're going to have to figure out how we live within those, and um, it's, it's just a very difficult environment for us. And then finally, I kind of gave some thought on the um, uh, sustainability, and I want to offer this up to my colleagues as, as far as what we are, are doing here on the sustainability. We're looking at trying to um, keep on doing the things the way we were doing it and in, in private industry w when you know the uh, the threat that uh, businesses face the existential threat and, and you can look at some of them that have gone out I mean what comes to mind is Sears they're no longer really a viable and um, just other businesses crown books they had uh, had their time they had uh, come and gone so I think one of the things that we're facing really here and and we get a chance to do that because we're small and we've got six years to really figure this out but we really need to re-engineer how the city as a corporate structure how we govern ourselves and i think that the three big things that we really got to focus on are public safety maintaining city-owned infrastructure and assets 
and enforcing the codes that we, uh, the, you know, the, the, our building codes, our uh, municipal code, and really the kind of the CCNRs of how we live and, and we want to treat our neighbors. So, you know, that is the challenge that we're going to face. And I just have to say, what I've seen, and, you know, we can't keep on doing it the way we're doing it. So it's going to be a real, it's really going to be tough because I think uh, the way we exist now, if we continue to exist this way, we're going to go bankrupt. So we're really going to have to do some re-engineering, and that's just a, a commentary. We're going to have some really spirited discussions, I think, coming up on, uh, you know, again, we've got a ballot measure that we're probably going to have to entertain, but uh, we're going to see where we're, uh, we're going to end up on that one. So um, I kind of went a little bit over and out, outside of normally what we should do. I'm going to give my colleagues a chance to have a second chance at uh, council comments if you want. Anybody want to make a second? With that, we'll go ahead and close that. And uh, number eight would be items from the city manager. I don't know, council members. Uh, the two items I was going to mention, you both covered. But if I could expand really quick on the fiscal sustainability outreach, uh, it's more than just these five meetings. Uh, we really want to hear from the community at large uh, at any time over the next few months. And our website is a great place to go to. There's a page dedicated uh, to this topic. Uh, the slides that are being presented at the community workshop meetings are available for viewing, and there's also contact information uh, in order to reach out to us and provide any feedback uh, that uh, the community would like to. So we're continue to to solicit that, uh, and we also will have a, a survey coming out here uh, by the end of the year. So more uh, more opportunities to provide input as we venture forward. And uh, I wanted to hand it over to Ron Noda, uh, our recreation manager, as he has one additional uh, announcement to make. Thank you. I just have a really quick announcement. We want to announce that uh, the race on the base registration is open. Um, the race, as a reminder, it will take place February 21st and 22nd of 2020 on the Joint Forces Training Base. And so, again, please visit raceonthebase.com to register and to get more information about the race. Thank you. Thank you. Includes my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item we have our warrants. Uh, so all the um, well, I guess uh, any is there a motion for the warrants? I'll move. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Chirko and Murphy, and we have a roll call vote on this, please. Mayor Kusumoto? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Murphy? Aye. Council Member Chirko? Aye. Council Member Gross? Aye. Council Member Hasselbrink? Aye. Thank you. Next, we have the consent calendar. So all consent calendar items may be acted upon on one motion unless a council member requests separate action on any on a specific item. So does anyone want to pull anything on the consent calendar? I'll pull C. C is pulled. <clears throat> yes. Anything else? Move the rest. Um, I'm going to pull H. H is pulled. Yeah. I'm still moving the rest. <laughs> okay. The balance moved by Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Patrico, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, passes unanimously. Okay. So um, who wants to oh, see you on a staff report or you have a? Just, just to actually, I don't actually have any questions. I just wanted to get a staff report so that the community that the work that's being done and the the money that's being spent uh, i think wisely here um, is highlighted for our community since a lot of uh, residents often raise concerns about the quality of the you know streets and parking lots in our in our community absolutely i'll, I'll provide a brief summary and then if you have any specific questions i know our city attorney mr hunt will will be able to handle that but uh, what this represents is a a fairly substantial uh, pavement rehabilitation work that will be conducted. It's a grind and overlay of streets within the Greenbrook neighborhood. It will also include Farquhar Avenue uh, from Los Alamitos Boulevard uh, to Bloomfield and then the Little Cottonwood parking lot. So all of those areas within our community will receive uh, a grind and overlay. So basically a new, uh, new asphalt pavement treatment when that work is done. Uh, we went through a, uh, a bid solicitation process and the lowest bidder has been identified uh, as Hardy and Harper and uh, the amounts have been identified within the, the report. Uh, basically the uh, total amount uh, uh, represents a $711,458 uh, cost. Uh, we have the sufficient funds within uh, our current budget to be able to accommodate that and I'd like to point out too within those funds that uh, almost half of that is coming from Measure M funds. So I wanted to make sure there was a note to that as well. And uh, that would conclude my report and be happy to answer any questions you may have. No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Make a motion. I'll move to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Murphy, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, H, yeah. report. 
No, I don't need a report. I just wanted to make a comment real quick. This was something I brought up a couple of months ago um, out of a, a little bit of frustration of not really understanding what was happening in the traffic commission meetings, but then hearing it from my neighbors of what was happening in the traffic commission meetings. Um, and for years, we've always had summarized um, minutes um, per our direction. So it's, it's something we created ourselves. But as traffic is becoming more and more important and such a hot topic, even as we're doing these community meetings, um, I, I just really wanted better understand what was happening in the meetings rather than just the summarize. So I had brought up the absolute over the top, you know, solution about televising them and everything else. And um, it, it got the conversation started. And I feel with this item here, we, we got to a great compromise. Uh, we're going to beef up the minutes a little bit, and then they're also going to be looking at audio recordings um, so we can understand as a community and also as council um, the results of their meetings and everything. So I just want to thank staff and also the traffic commission for, for um, hearing me out and coming to a very good compromise. And with that, I'll move the item. Motion. Uh, second. Murphy, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, on to 11. So 11 is a public hearing on, on the zoning code, zoning map, and subdivision codes update. <coughs> and with that, I'll ask for a report. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council members. Uh, for a um, matter of history regarding this, uh, this item, uh, this process began in 2017 uh, following the completion of our general plan update, which was finished in 2015 and the core objective of this effort is to ensure that there's consistency between the city's general plan, its zoning code, and its zoning map. Uh, the city secured a consultant team, uh, MIG, uh, to assist us with those update efforts. Uh, it was a very engaging process here over the, the last few years. There were uh, a number of uh, meetings uh, with staff and the consultant team. There was uh, seven stakeholder meetings conducted uh, there was also an advisory committee established and that committee uh, held five meetings. Uh, we also had three planning commission study session meetings that were very engaged and, uh, and involved. And then as a result of all of that, on June 26 of this year, uh, the planning commission uh, considered the draft zoning code. As a result of that, uh, consideration, excuse me, of that consideration, uh, there were some general plan amendments that were identified uh, to be needed, and uh, that went forward. And as a result of that, the Planning Commission considered all of these items at their September 25th meeting. There were two main objectives uh, with this uh, exercise. Uh, that was to update the zoning and subdivision codes as well as the city's zoning map. As I mentioned before, consistency with the general plan was a priority. But in addition to the consistency with the general plan, there were also additional code changes and updates that were considered uh, by uh, the parties involved. And uh, as a result of that, there were additional general plan amendments that became necessary. In summary of those code amendment items, uh, very quickly, there was the elimination of conflicts with other code provisions, as there were a number in our, in our current code. There was also the creation of the town center mixed use zone that was identified in our general plan, uh, but this now actually creates uh, development standards and criteria as well as physically identifies it within our, our zoning map. We also uh, are proposing the elimination of the limited industrial zone and that area under the former LI zone would be integrated into our plan light industrial zone and would also allow for certain commercial recreation uses to be provided in that area with the issuance of a conditional use permit. Uh, the effort also modernized our land use tables and simplified development standards for our zoning districts, which is critically important because they're not only used by staff, but the, the public actually reads those sometimes, and it's good if it can make sense and they can actually understand it and not have to call us all the time. Um, so that was a great addition uh, to go through that. We also made some adjustments We also made some adjustments to our parking standards, uh, our sign standards, also some minor adjustments there primarily to ensure that we're consistent with case law in a federal uh, uh, matter that happened a few years ago. Uh, there's the addition of a live work overlay zone within a certain part of the community. And then another item too is 
uh, a allowance for city staff to administratively handle minor site development permits. And as identified here, uh, uh, the idea was if they're 2,500 square feet or less in size, that that would be handled administratively and not require planning commission consideration. We organized our temporary, temporary use permit regulations and then there were a few very minor changes to our subdivision code. The general plan amendments uh, included three, and those were a result, again, of the municipal code changes that came forward. Uh, they focused on, first, clarifying professional office designations, allowing retail and service commercial uses, in addition to the standard office uses that are in that designation. Uh, the elimination of the limit industrial district and having that all within the plan light industrial district. And then finally, an amendment that would uh, reduce the density, the maximum density within the multifamily residential area from a maximum of 30 to not more than 25 units per acre. Those amendments again were affirmed by council and were processed accordingly. With regards to the zoning map, uh, the changes in general include, the, again, the creation of the town center mixed use zoning district and, uh, and visually identifying that on the map, uh, eliminating the light industrial zoning district and representing the planned light industrial district covering all of those properties and the representation of the live work overlay zone. Uh, that update process included well over 100 parcels uh, uh, seeing some type of a zoning district change and an extensive notification process was conducted by Associate Planner Tom Oliver in notifying each and every parcel owner. And uh, a lot of time was spent by Tom engaging with residents with regards to questions about that change and uh, was a very successful engagement. The Planning Commission, uh, their action included, again, multiple commission meetings, uh, the three study sessions, and uh, the draft codes being rep represented to or presented to them in June. Uh, the final meeting of uh, putting all of that information together was conducted back in September this last uh, month. And as a result of the work, uh, the commission moved unanimously to recommend city council approval of all the amendments as they were presented and as they are before you this evening. So as a result of that, uh, we have um, uh, a number of items for your uh, action for consideration. First is to open the hearing and then discussion of the recommended amendments and then s uh, separate actions involving uh, approving an amendment to the general plan of final environmental impact report and adoption of a resolution uh, and uh, another action regarding uh, a final environmental impact report and then two final ordinances that represent uh, the actual code changes which uh, would be read by our city attorney. With that, that concludes my staff report and happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, so I'm gonna go first. So I, we, we already saw some of the stuff in the earlier session, but um, one of the things on the, if you go back a slide uh, to on the live work overlay zone, can, can you kind of give us a, a you know a, a definition of the overlay because we had overlay before uh, retail which didn't quite work out so what does this overlay do for us sure I'm, uh, if, and mayor I'm going to ask our associate planner Tom Oliver to expand upon that for you uh, where this uh, came about was uh, we had meetings for the general plan where people said they would like uh, lawyers and doctors said they would like to have an office at their home and be able to invite clients to come in and uh, so that was the germination of this. So, so it allows the use then? Right, it okay. allows more uses. Okay. So you can work at home and, and have people actually come in and, and leave. Okay. You know. Thank you. And it's in that certain, whatever the um, uh, designated zone, is that uh, right. correct? Right, live, okay. work, overlay zone, which is uh, the old town, east section of town. Gotcha, thank you. And then, uh, Les, back to you, I think on the, Commission moving unanimously to recommend that we approve this. Um, can you kind of just give us a quick summary of how many meetings and how many hours they spent on this? Because it wasn't trivial. So maybe just no. a yeah summary on that. 
Absolutely, Mary. No, it, it was far from trivial. There was a, a number of hours. Uh, we had three uh, workshops that I mentioned. I think each of those workshops were probably in the neighborhood of an hour and a half to two hours, if not longer. And uh, that was in addition to their typical planning commission meetings. So those were a few very long evenings uh, for, for the commission and staff. Uh, they also, as I mentioned in, on, in June on the 26th, considered this, and that was a very long meeting, but as a result of a lot of that discussion, they had additional changes they wanted to make that resulted in those general plan amendments. So I think altogether, I think the commission alone probably put in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 hours in commission meetings. That doesn't obviously take into account the amount of time they spent outside the meetings preparing their, the reviewing and preparing uh, for those meetings, but a tremendous amount of time and effort on the commission's part. And plus the consultant too, right? I mean. Uh, our, yes, our consultant team spent a lot of time and effort. We, we, uh, our, our hour per dollar amount was was very good on this project. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Um, and then before we open the public hearing, any other, any other questions? Okay. No. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing. And uh, I guess any member of the public wishes to speak on this matter, please um, by all means step forward. Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And then uh, back to the council here. Um, any other questions? Any other discussion or? Um, I guess city attorney, should we just take this in whole or in part? I'm looking at this and. Uh, you could do either. The one thing I'd ask is I do need to read the titles of the ordinances in to the record. So as to item six and seven, we'll need some sort of reading of those ordinances. Okay. Items. So could I move as recommended and then <clears throat> our city attorney would follow that up with? Yep. So, so I'll move all the items as recommended. Second. Thank you. So one to you, city attorney. Sure, thank you. So uh, before the City Council for introduction and first reading this evening is Ordinance 2019-03 entitled An Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Los Alamitos, California, amending Title 16 and 17 of the Los Alamitos Municipal Code to be consistent with the 2035 Los Alamitos General Plan as part of Zoning Ordinance Amendment 1704, City Initiated. In addition, before the council for introduction and first reading this evening is ordinance number 2019-04, which is entitled an ordinance of the city council of the city of Los Alamitos, California, amending the zoning map of the city of Los Alamitos to conform to the city's general plan land use map as part of zoning ordinance amendment 1704, city initiated. Thank you. Okay, so for the vote, we do not need a roll call vote, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So no. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None passes unanimously. Thank you very much. The next item we'll have is 12A, which is um, the 2019 Building Standards uh, Code and Fire Code Adoption. Over to you, City, Ma City Manager. The Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Uh, for greater than a decade, the State Building Standards Commission has been adopting new construction regulations every three years. Uh, this is known as the California Building Standards Code. And in 20, uh, the 2019 California Building Standard Code will take effect and apply to all cities uh, on January 1st of 2020. Local jurisdictions have the authority to make amendments to the standards code that are administrative, procedural, or more stringent due to local climatic, geological, or topographical conditions. Uh, there are a limited number of amendments to reflect local conditions that apply to certain uh, roofing materials, concrete or masonry foundation walls, swimming pool barriers and small wire installations. Um, overall, the new standards code is primarily energy efficient related. Um, this is being introduced at this time in order to provide sufficient time uh, to process this and for the requirements to go into effect effective January 1st, 2020. Uh, the amendments also include certain changes to the fire code as well. Uh, the Orange uh, County Fire Authority has been the lead on this portion of that effort and a number of amendments are proposed with most being minor revisions. I do want to note uh, that there is uh, the, the introduction of 11 new amendments that address mobile fueling, uh, including the prohibition of on-demand mobile fueling. There's been a, quite an increase of that and uh, it, it really is a, a mobile gas coming to your car and pumping up at your car and there's a lot of serious concerns with that and uh, fire related. And so these provisions really uh, restrict, if not completely prevent that. 
And uh, so the first reading of the two ordinances is obviously scheduled for this evening. Uh, now, this is a bit different. As required by state law, a public hearing will actually be scheduled to occur at, during the second reading. So uh, next month, should you move forward tonight, next month you will actually have a public hearing during the second reading portion of this. And uh, that will basically conclude my report, but I want to point out that there are a number of people in the audience that are here and able to answer your questions. We have our, our building official, Mark Abbott, our building inspector, Alan Chambers, and also assistant fire marshal, <coughs> Brian Healy, are in attendance. And that concludes my report, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank so, you. to the council, any questions for this? No. Topic? You mentioned the 11 changes, one of which was the mobile fueling. Do we have a list of what those other changes are? Or can the fire department identify those? <coughs> Mr. Healy, do you want to come up and press that? Honorable Mayor, Council, my name is Brian Healy with Orange County Fire. Um, we have several concerns with, with this issue. Um, the first one is that this is the first time that this information um, has come into the code. Um, it's the first time that, it, that it's come through and there's a lot of issues with it, specifically that it's less restrictive than a, than a, a state of the art uh, mobile fueling, or not mobile fueling, but a regular gas station. Um, there's more um, procedures in place and safety precautions in place on a set gas station than there is on mobile fueling currently. Second thing is, um, regulating this is, is our biggest concern. Um, we do not have a citation process. We have really no way to regulate anybody who's not doing this the right way. We have one pilot going right now uh, in Irvine and they're, they're questioning whether they're gonna continue. Um, we, as a group, wanna give it some time. Um, the other thing is, if you do decide to do this, we have to look at um, not the good players is our concern is is the the players coming in that want to put two five gallon cans in the back of their car and drive around and serve people in the neighborhoods this does not allow any public it has to be on private property um, it has to be permitted and approved um, on that private property and each of the cities their police departments would have to regulate how they're going to enforce this so those are our couple of major issues. The, the fact that the code just hasn't caught up yet, um, it's difficult to enforce, if at all, it's difficult to permit right now, and it's gonna create an enforcement nightmare is our biggest concern. We don't think that this is something we can't work through, but we just don't feel that it's quite there yet. So are you suggesting we do not approve this? No, that we are, we've provided it as we're not, we've, we're asking you not to approve, uh, approve it in that document. Is that correct? It's my understanding. The, has it not? What's, what's in the document as proposed would not allow for that to occur, but he's saying to approve it as drafted. It's been amended pursuant to the recommendations, uh, yes, sir. recommended changes by the OCFA, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Okay. How does that apply to things uh, like fueling of airplanes and we, so on? We have fleet fueling. That's in the code currently, and we've been doing that for years, and we're comfortable with fleet fueling. So that's not an issue. If a school district or an OCTA wanted to have somebody come and fill their buses, that's something we can work out because we can regulate that lot for multiple fillings. Um, and we do that. And the code is, is much better prepared to, to provide um, conditions for that currently. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Um, just uh, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, I'll just, uh, anybody, member of the public wants to sp speak on this item, certainly can come forward and ask questions or uh, get some input. So seeing that, we'll go ahead and close uh, public comments. And back to the council, is there a motion on the recommendation? I'll move. Second. Go Murphy. Okay, and city attorney, I guess you'll read, please. <coughs> Before the City Council for introduction and first reading is ordinance number 201905, which is entitled An Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Los Alamitos, California, amending Chapter 15.04 of Title 15 of the Los Alamitos Municipal Code and adopting the 2019 edition of the California Building Standards Code, California Code of Regulations, Title 24, consisting of the 2019 California Administrative Code the 2019 California Building Code, including Appendix J, 
the 2019 California Residential Code, including appendices H and V, the 2019 California Electrical Code, the 2019 California Mechanical Code, the 2019 California Plumbing Code, the, Cali uh, the 2019 California Energy Code, the 2019 California Historical Building Code, the 2019 California Existing Building Code, the 2019 California Green Building Standards Code, and the 2019 California Reference Standards Code, together with certain amendments, additions, and deletions, and adopting the 2018 International Property Maintenance Code and the 2018 International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, together with certain amendments, additions, and deletions. Additionally, before the City Council for introduction uh, by title only is ordinance 2019 which is entitled an ordinance of the city council of the city of los alamitos california amending chapter 15.08 of title 15 of the los alamitos municipal code and adopting the 2019 edition of the california fire code uh, california code of regulations title 24 part 9 including appendices b B, B, C, and C, C, together with certain amendments, additions, and deletions. <coughs> Thank you. So all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. And, and it does include the, uh, of course, number four, about uh, bringing it back for the public hearing. Okay. Okay. And I think that's it, right? So the <laughs> next. 13A. Pardon me? 13A. <coughs> yeah, so we're going to go into closed session. Um, oh, no, no. Th there is one more discussion item agenda. This is 13A. Beg your pardon. So, <coughs> so this is the approval of amendment number two to the employment agreement for the interim city manager services. So I was trying to cheat you out of some additional <laughs> assignment there, uh, Les. So um, I guess who will you will give this? Uh, I, I can make a Please. presentation to the council briefly. So. As you know, on August 19th, 2019, the City Council entered into Amendment <coughs> Number 1 to Mr. Johnson's employment agreement, which provided for his services as interim city attorney, city manager, rather, while the City Council conducted its recruitment of the city full-time city manager position. Um, that agreement itself will expire by its own terms on November 14th, 2019. So we brought back before you an expansion or an extension of the existing arrangement with Mr. Johnson which would uh, run until January 20th, 2020. Um, I wanted to point out there was unfortunately a clerical error in the staff report and the draft amendment, which mistakenly stated the, the termination date as January 20th, 2019, which uh, I apologize for, we can't, we can't go backwards, although that'd be a nice windfall for, for Mr. Johnson <laughs> if we were able to. Uh, so should the council decide to move forward, we will correct that clerical error. Um, the terms of the amendment would be the same as were agreed to with amendment number one, which provides for uh, compensation of $1,500 per bi-monthly pay period. Um, as I've stated, the extension termination date would be January 20th, 2020, but the agreement itself would potentially terminate earlier if the city council moves forward and actually uh, appoints a full-time permanent city manager during that term. That concludes my, my report. Okay. Um, so any questions? I just wanted a real quick comment um, with Councilman Tricko and I on the ad hoc committee for the hiring committee. With this being about three and a half weeks away, this was just a placeholder. Um, we're real close um, as we go into closed session tonight, um, but we didn't want to lapse out of the agreement. So um, we don't see this anywhere near going towards January of 2020, but we just wanted to make sure that we were covered on all bases as we move forward. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Any member of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that. So is there a uh, motion for this? So moved. Second. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Passes. Thank you, Les, for your service. Okay, now I think we get to go into closed. Okay, before, so before you do that, can I make one comment for the drug take back this oh, Saturday? Please. Um, it also includes expired medications and liquids, but the DEA has approved taking back any uh, e cigarettes uh, or related materials. So you'll be able to take those back as well. Thank you. If you can expand why we do this just a little bit, so all for the members of the public, 
I think it's very important why we do this. The purpose of, of the drug take back is to get uh, unused, expired uh, drugs out of the house. Uh, oftentimes you'll get a, a prescription that'll be more than you need, uh, and so they hang around. They're subject to uh, theft, uh, sometimes uh, within the family, sometimes with people that visit the house, and the purpose is to get these uh, medications out of circulation. And uh, I think, Chief, do you remember how many pounds took over 200, I think, last year? I'm not sure what it was. Yeah, it was well over 200. Yeah. And, and these are done throughout the uh, state. It's not just strictly here in Los Al, but there's take back areas all over. And it's a good opportunity for parents and stuff to be able to turn this stuff in. And as I said, they just, the DEA just did come out and announce that they are gonna be taking back uh, vaping uh, pins and, and fluids and so on as well, so. And if I can add my kind of comment on that, the reason we turn this in too is because we don't want to have you flush it down the toilets because it ends up in the oceans and it's really just not a good situation for, for the earth. So do this, I mean, uh, turn it back responsibly. I mean, even, I mean, <coughs> I just noticed I have Pepto-Bismol tablets that have been sitting there for like over a decade and I'm gonna bring that because again, we don't want that in our water table. Um, it's, just, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for us. So please make, make that effort to bring it in, thank you. And with that, we'll go into closed session. You want to take us into closed, please? Thank you, Mayor. The City Council will now adjourn into closed session to discuss item 14A as listed on your agenda. Thank you. If I